If you find yourself in London when Wimbledon is on, you might check to see how much tickets are selling for on sites like StubHub, and you might be shocked to find single day tickets going for thousands of pounds each. And even for the first round of play before any of the big matchups. But this is very important. Wimbledon has a very unique way of selling tickets, which may not be like going to any other sporting event in the world. It's possible that you can score one of the best seats in the house for only 37 pounds at the last minute, like I did, and I'm gonna show you exactly how it works. Spoiler, be prepared to wait a very long time. Hey everyone, my name is Preet Banerjee and I'm a consultant to the wealth management industry and former stockbroker, among other things, and this channel is for anyone wanting to learn more about the world of money around us. Wimbledon is one of the world's most famous sporting events, steeped in tradition, and even if you're not a diehard tennis fan, it's a bucket list item right up there with going to the Olympics or the Super Bowl or the World Cup. And with pretty much all sold out sporting events, you can still find tickets on sites like StubHub, Viagogo, and others, where you know you're generally gonna pay more than face value, especially if it's a last minute purchase, and especially if it's a primo event. For example, Super Bowl tickets for 2023 were averaging around $9,000 a pop. And of course, you can find much higher prices for the best seats in the house to the tune of about $42,200 and change per ticket which is close to the down payment of a down payment of a house in Toronto. As a comparison, as of right now, a single ticket to the Wimbledon men's finals are as much as 20,483 pounds each. And you'd be seated next to the Royal Box, which is, I guess, like the Mecca for social climbers. Now in US dollars, a pair of these tickets would be just over $52,000. But another thing you might notice is that there aren't a lot of tickets available on reseller sites and that's certainly one of the reasons that ticket prices seem abnormally high even for an event like Wimbledon. And that's because almost all Wimbledon tickets are not allowed to be resold. To explain, let's break down the main ways to buy Wimbledon tickets. First, we have what are called debenture holders and their resultant debenture tickets. We also have the ballot and we have the queue. To start, it might help to explain what the venue looks like in order to understand how tickets work. Wimbledon takes place at the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club in the district of Wimbledon, which is in southwest London, and there are 18 courts. The three best courts are known as the show courts, center court, number one court, and number two court. And as you can imagine, the most desirable courts are the show courts. Even early on in the tournament, the bigger names in the sport will play on the show courts. And as the tournament progresses, eventually you only have matches on the show courts and eventually the big finals are at center court. Okay, so let's start with the debentures because these are the wildest. Debentures are sold for center court and and number one court and are essentially the right to a seat for five year blocks. And that gives you access to all 14 days of matches during each year's tournament. So that's a total of 70 days of play over the five consecutive years. The current debentures for center court run from 2021 to 2025 and cost 80,000 pounds when they were first issued. Now, if you were to average out the cost of a center court debenture over the five years it covers, that works out to just over 1,100 pounds per day. Debenture tickets are the only single day tickets that can be resold on reseller websites like StubHub. But what is really interesting is that there is a private secondary market where an original debenture holder can sell their entire debenture interest anytime during the five year term. And you do this by asking your stockbroker to help you secure them if you live in the UK. And private sales may still be possible in other countries, however, because these debentures are financial securities and are subject to securities laws, which are different in different countries, there are restrictions and residents of the United States and Canada cannot buy them. Some of the latest sales for the center court debentures are documented and were for well over face value. Two years into the five year term for the center court debentures, the most recently reported sale price was 115,000 pounds. So in effect, the original debenture holder who paid 80,000 pounds and sold it for 115,000 pounds effectively got paid 35,000 pounds to see every match at Wimbledon for two years. Or if they sold their debenture tickets for each day of play for an average of maybe 2,000 pounds, 
might have pocketed another roughly 54,000 pounds, meaning that they could have made a return of 111% on their money over just two years. Now, there are not a lot of debenture holders out there. Center Court only has 2,520 debentures, and Number One Court has 1,250. And that's it. So that means a maximum of 3,770 tickets per day could be resold through reseller sites, although presumably many debenture holders actually want to go to Wimbledon for themselves, so that number is likely even lower. But this helps explain why resale tickets are so expensive. However, the majority of Wimbledon tickets are sold through what's called the ballot. In the fall of each year before the next open, you can register in the ballot for a chance to win the ability to purchase reserved ticketed seats to Wimbledon on the show courts. The official website says that people who enter the ballot have a 1 in 10 chance of being allowed to buy a pair of tickets. But there's also a bit of a catch beyond those catches. You only get one pair and it's for a randomly assigned day, court, and pair of seats. You don't get to choose anything. Winners of the ballot start getting notified around February and there is a prescribed price list for the tickets based on what random pair you get assigned. The later into the tournament, the higher the ticket price, the better the court, the higher the ticket price. And you either agree to buy the two tickets you were drawn or you decline and they get redrawn to someone else who didn't win in the first round of the ballot and you don't get a second shot, that's basically it. But there is one more major option for people who missed out on the ballot or didn't know about it like me and don't want to pay thousands of pounds for a ticket on StubHub also like me. And this is the queue. Just as it sounds, it's basically a giant lineup. Easily the biggest lineup I've ever seen in my life. And people actually camp out every night to be first in the queue because every day, except for the last four days of the tournament, Wimbledon holds back 500 reserved seats in each of the three show courts. So if you are first in line, you could actually get a reserved seat in one of the best courts for that day. But if you don't get a show court ticket, you could still get one of the many thousands of grounds passes that allow you to watch the action from up to 15 different courts. Now, I didn't feel like camping out, but based on what I saw online, they said it was likely to get a grounds pass if you showed up before 9 a.m. And they said that the wait would be long, perhaps four hours or longer. You get in line and then someone comes around with a cue card that has a number stamped on it representing your place in line. And they are very strict about line jumping. And if you manage to sneak your way to the ticket booth ahead of your turn, they will turn you away if you don't have the right number on your cue card. I showed up at about 8.45 a.m. and the number on my cue card was 5,460. So I was a little bit apprehensive as to whether or not I would actually get in, but luckily as they handed me the card, they said, based on this, you'll probably get in around 1 p.m. No worries. And they were right. After just under four hours, I got to the ticket booth and purchased a grounds pass for 27 pounds and I was in. Unfortunately, it then started to rain nonstop and all play on all uncovered courts were completely suspended. But, and here's the last quirk, and I think a very good quirk of the Wimbledon ticket selling process, when ticket holders leave the grounds, their tickets are scanned and those tickets then become available for same day ticket resales to anyone who is inside the grounds. And you just have to line up again. So after another three hours, I eventually got to the front of that line and the same day show court ticket resales are actually super affordable. 10 pounds for number one and number two court and 15 pounds for center court. So super cheap compared to all the other options, but you get in late in the day. As luck would have it, I ended up with maybe the best seat in the house for number one court, the absolute front row. Because of the rain, they ended up adding another match to the schedule for that court. And so I got to catch almost two full matches, all for a total of 37 pounds and seven hours of waiting in line. So I guess the question is, was it worth it? Now, I'm not a regular tennis watcher, but I had a phase when I was a kid of, you know, watching a few matches of some Grand Slams on TV, but I was never hardcore. But Wimbledon was definitely a unique experience. And luckily I had a bunch of podcasts to listen to to help pass the time. And very luckily I did bring an umbrella. And after all that, I'd have to say that personally, I would do it again. It was pretty cool to be at Wimbledon. 
But at the same time, I also absolutely registered with Wimbledon to get access to the ballot for next year because if I can skip having to wait in line for almost half a day, I'd rather much prefer to do that. But there is hope if you're in London and Wimbledon happens to be on, there is a possibility of being able to go to Wimbledon, catch some tennis without breaking the bank. If you made it this far, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content like this to learn more about the world of money around us. And you know, maybe it's not content like this because this video is actually just about getting to Wimbledon on the cheap. <laughs> but in any case, I'll see you in the next video.